Okay, so my topic tonight um, is going to be stopping the run. Um, I'm going to fly through the first couple of quads quickly. I just want to give you a little introduction about myself and my background um, in terms of in terms of coaching defense. Um, this is a brief history of time as it relates to me. This all started as a defensive coach for me. I started in Quebec in the midget league, went up, did a little bit in the CJFL, um, was very fortunate to land a great gig at Vanier College, being the D.C., um, became the D-line linebacker coach of Concordia University, became the D.C., um, went on to coach uh, Team Quebec three times as a defensive coordinator, um, and then had a hell of a run um, both internationally with the, with the world team. Um, and I was also the defensive coordinator and head coach um, for the Canadian national team from about 2007 till uh, 2016. Um, and very fortunate to uh, beat the U.S. a couple of times. And uh, one of my favorite ones with Coach Marshall was the head coach of the world team. Um, and we defeated and um, held them scoreless. Uh, well, we gave up a f we gave up two field goals. We didn't give them a touchdown. Uh, but we beat the U.S. Uh, with Jameis Winston at quarterback and Todd Gurley at tailback. So probably a highlight of my career, uh, Coach Marshall. That's the purple Greg Marshall from Western um, was the head coach. And uh, he did a great job of getting us organized. Um, very fortunate. Why I'm a head coach at York? Why York um, wanted me to 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 um, to come and be the head coach? Basically, what I had done in the past in, in terms of being a defensive coordinator, I was very fortunate to recruit some some pretty special kids. Um, in my nine years as a defensive coordinator uh, at Concordia, I was very fortunate to coach five national award winners, uh, four presidents' trophies um, with everyone. There's a little Kingston uh, at the top there, Corey Greenwood. Um, that won the President's Trophy. I was very fortunate uh, to coach four kids that won the President's Trophy um, and the Metris. Um, very blessed also. We had first, 14 first-team All-Canadians in that nine years and, and 23 conference All-Stars. Um, so I pretend to know what I'm talking about because basically because I have great players. Um, again, this is just a little background. Some of my favorite shots, um, you know, that one on, on, on my left there, um, that's 2016 when we upset the U.S., um, in Harbin, China. Uh, we were there for 24 days in Harbin, China with training camp and, and the mini tournament. And one of the highlights of my life, um, you can see the Kuwaiti Towers in the background. That's a team photo in Kuwait um, when we played um, the national championship in Kuwait. So just a lot of great memories. Football has taken me around the world and I'm very blessed and, and very thankful for what, it's, for what it's provided for me. So um, what I'm gonna talk to you um, all about, obviously defense. Um, we're going to chat about stopping the run. Now, um, why is stopping the run critical? Um, so the way I look at it, um, you know, we look as a defensive coordinator going into a matchup, uh, going into who, who our next opponent is. Um, you're looking at, you know, what they do best. Is it, is it running the ball? Is it throwing the ball? Is it a combination of both? Are they a play action pass team? Um, but stopping the run has always been, um, something that's very critical. Now, what I like about stopping the run is it's in a way for us to control downs. Okay, if we are a strong run defending team, I can control the down box. Okay, because if we're in three down football, I have to get it in second and long. That's that's my goal is second and long. Okay, second and medium, not a big fan of second and medium, got a ton of playbook for second and medium. My playbook goes down to about one page when it's second and short. So obviously, if you can have a good run stopping defense, you have an opportunity to control the down box. Um, it can take away an aspect of the offense's game plan. You know, um, if they're a heavy run team or even if they're a little bit of a run team, we go back and look what happened um, um, at the Super Bowl last Sunday. If you can take um, a strong aspect away from an offense, it's an opportunity for you to be more successful on the defensive side of the ball. Whether you're a coordinator that, that throws the hell out of the football, there's always that sense of pride in being able to run the football. And as a defense, if you can take that away um, from your offense, uh, from an offense, you're really taking what I like to, I tell my players all the time, you're trying to take away a little piece of their soul. Um, and then obviously focusing on the importance of, of a rundown that allows an a sense of excitement um, for a fun down. And what I mean by that, I already stated, right? Like when I present the first day of training camp, whether I was with the national team, when I was back at my old school, when I was a defensive coordinator, we went in there 
and there was nothing more important to us than P and 10 than possession and 10 or first and 10. Okay. It was the most important thing we did. Okay. Um, it's the most emphasis we put into anything because we were playing for second and long because second and long for a defense is a fun down. Okay. It opens up a ton of stuff. We can play cover zero. We can play cover one. We can play coverage design and rush four. Our playbook opens up a lot more when we can get offenses into that into that second and long mode. So that's what we're that's why stopping the run is critical in our approach as being defensive coordinators. Now, um, the identity pressure guide. Um, you know, stopping the run is about setting the unit's culture, okay? The defense's culture. That's, you know, that's a sense of, of what we do. Um, I, you know, being a DC, I always, you know, whether, wherever I was, you know, we walk into a meeting um, and we'll always say, what do we play on? You know, what do we play on first down? They'd respond, this is our, this is our defensive call. Why do we do it? Because that's what we do, right? That's what we do. We stop the run because we want to get to set to second and long. It's about setting the standard. You know, it's it's stopping the run to me. And we're going to hear some great presentations later on. Setting the standard, stopping the run is like being in the is like being in the offseason in the weight room. It's about picking up heavy things and putting them back down again over and over and over again. OK, it's about sending that standard, drawing that line as a sand on defense. This is one thing you are not going to do to us. And that's running the football. And then, you know, goal setting. Now that ties into game planning. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, um, but ties into the game plan. Like you need to have goal setting um, is on a moving scale. Right. Depending on who you're playing, who your next opponent is, you know, game one, you might be setting a goal of, you know, you're not allowing more than 75 yards per game rushing. You're not allowing the offense to rush more than 75 yards. Everyone probably has a standard to keep it under hundred, but you know, week one, it might be 75. And then all of a sudden the week after, who knows, you got Western rolling in a town. You know, you might win that game if you try and set the standard at 150, you know, so goal setting is about trying to keep it realistic and, you know, 150, 100, holding a team to 150 yards rushing to one team is devastating. Whereas holding another team to 75 yards is devastating. So it's always a rolling scale when, when you're setting up the goal setting. So, um, you know, we talk about, you know, three steps. I always look at three steps when I'm building my playbook. You know, we look at step one, accountability and task description. You know, that's, that's defining everything. Then we move on to probably the two most important things in stopping the run is alignment and communication. Nothing more important than alignment and communication. Okay, I got it right jam-packed in the middle of my sandwich there. Um, but lining up correctly and communication is the two most critical factors into defending the run. Okay, uh, it's really funny. I'm going to tell a quick story. I'm trying to get off, uh, off topic here. I uh, coached a very successful defense uh, when, I was at the, when I was the defense coordinator at Concordia. Um, and we were playing our last game of our season, play Laval at home. We smack them real good, real good. Have a incredible game um we go in we win a first we win our home playoff game against montreal we're getting ready to go play the dunsmore cup in quebec city we go up there we're on a roll you know we you know we beat laval last game of the season we just beat montreal we're rolling on defense we had three back-to-back -back goal line stands against montreal to win the game we're pumped we go into laval they come out first play of the game they play us the whole game in double tight end and they run the fricking ball down my throat like I've never seen in my life before. And we lose the Dunsmore Cup. We were built to stop the run, but we were more built for second and long. We could cover, we could blitz. That's what we were built to do. They, they changed the game, something I'd never seen before, right? Now, double tight ends all over the world. Well, coming back into the fold now in university football, didn't see it back then. And I didn't know how to align it. I didn't know how to align properly with double tight end had a great head coach, had a relationship um, with, at the time, the defensive coordinator at the University of Michigan, Tom Herman. Bam, we make a call, we go to Michigan, we spend four days in Michigan, get Tom Herman to teach us how to play double tight end. Um, and it's funny, um, I can tell you, I watch a lot of tape. I'd say about half the defense coordinators in this country know how to line up properly against the tight end. And playing great defense is about aligning 
aligning properly. And obviously communication, which I'll get into further later on uh, in my presentation, that communication between defenders, first line defenders, middle range defenders, and back end defenders, if that communication is not on point, we're not going to be able to do anything out there. And then step three, I like to call it fluff. It's not really fluff, but it's toughness. You know, you need that sense of toughness to be able to stop the run. And again, we will always put our goal. Step three, that last goal is second and long. Because we are going to stop the run so we can get to that parameter of second and long. Um, the base is stopping the run. So write this right here. So stop. I'm going to give you a good analogy here. I, I didn't invent this one. I stole this one from a great coach who, who mentored me. Um, stopping the runs like building a fence. Okay. Um, so the first thing you need to do is you need a post. You actually need two posts. Okay. And defending the run is having an outside post and an inside post where we are a secure edge on either side where we can force the ball into a cylinder. Okay. And then within building that fence, we need our beams. This is where the defensive line fits in holding their gaps, right? So we've set our edge, we've set, we've stuck a stake in the ground, play side, nothing's going to be run outside of me. We got the back end, say, end set with our chase player. We got the back end of our post set. Now we get an interior lineman fitting inside in our gaps. And then finally, the last thing that goes up are our boards. There are linebackers, there are fit within uh, that run fit. That's where the linebackers fit in between our outside edge defenders, our inside edge defenders, and our defensive line in holding gap integrity. So, you know, it's an analogy I've always loved. And, and I, al I always share this with my players. You want to stop the run. It's a lot like building the fence. It's the exact same, it's the exact same parameters. So um, I'm going to share with you right now. Um, so this is our, uh, I'm going to talk right now about a 4-3. I'm a big 4-3 guy. I can talk uh, a 50 front, 3-4. I can talk at all, but most of my life I've been a, I've been a four three guy. Um, our base four three, um, we call it Texas. We call it Texas base four three. This has been my call since I've been the defensive coordinator at Vanier College. Um, we've called our base front Texas. Um, it's a, it's a basic four three defense. Um, we use multiple line and linebacker adjustments to show versatility while we keep the same contour. Um, we set in this scenario. Um, we set the front to run probability. I'm going to get back to what that means. Um, and we always, one of the most important thing, and I find a lot of young defensive coordinators get caught up in this, is you have to marry your coverage with your front. They're not independent of each other. You can't create these wacky coverages and throw any front with it. And it's vice versa. You can't make up these fronts and create these wacky coverages. The front and the coverage always have to be married. So what I'm showing you right now is what we consider six man box. Okay. So for now, for this part of the presentation, we normally don't count the quarterback in our count. Okay. So we got a six man box. We got five offensive linemen and we got a tailback. So we are going to set the front to the run probability. So they're in pistol right now. Um, they're in pistol right now. Um, so Whenever a team's in pistol, what we're going to say is the run probability is strong side. So we are going to set our front to the strong side. So what that means is we are going to set our three tech, our most dominant interior defensive lineman, we are going to set our three technique to the run probability. Okay. Now, if the back was set here, that's our run probability. We're fine. If the back was set on this side, we're going to shift the front. And we're going to move and we're going to set the three tech to the side of the run probability. So that's what I mean. Um, so that's what I mean when I talk about setting the front to our run probability. So basically what we're looking at right now and trying to defend the run is we're what we, what I would call um, since for always um, we're a gap responsible defense. So basically what that means is my two, seven techniques, our gap responsible for the C gap. My three tech is gap responsible um, for the strong side B gap. 
my one tech is responsible for that weak side A and my 10 technique, Mike Linebacker. He's gap responsible for the A and my 30 technique, Will Linebacker, is gap responsible for that B. So that's not gap cancellation. So what gap cancellation would be in that scenario is when the ball snapped, the linebackers would run straight downhill and they'd fit in their gaps, okay? I want to be, I like trying to steal on defense, okay? So basically what I'm going to try and do with my, with my linebackers, I'm going to try not, I'm going to call it double gap, but it's not really double gap. So I'm going to defend the gap I'm responsible for at depth. So the only time I am going to fill my gap, if I'm in this scenario, if I'm the Mike linebacker, so if I'm the 10 linebacker, the only time I am going to fill that gap is if I get vertical shoulders. So if I get shoulders from the tailback pointing north-south, if I get them pointing north and he's showing color in my gap, I am going to fill it. At any other scenario, I am going to maintain leverage I'm going to maintain leverage with the inside hip of the guard at depth, which will allow me, which will allow me to fit accordingly. For example, let's say outside zone to the wide side to fit accordingly of a wide hole between my rush trying to set the edge and my tackle trying to set the inside edge with the guard. There's going to be a natural void that opens in there. By being gap responsible and holding gap integrity at depth in that A-gap, it will allow me to fill in that alley, okay? It'll allow me to fill in that alley if the, if the, if the running back turns his shoulders towards the sideline. If I get vertical shoulders in the A-gap, I'm going to stick my nose in there. Now, the only other thing that's going to that's gonna happen for me that's going to make me fill in that a gap. If I'm that 10 linebacker, and this is where the nose has to do his job is if that double gets up and onto me. So if we get a natural double right here, the center and the guard on the nose up to the mic, the second the center comes off to the mic, we are going to tell our mic, we have lost. We don't want to get in a fight with the center. So if that center starts getting off, we are going to fill in our A gap based on that block. Same thing on the backside. So we're going to presume we get run action this way, whatever the run is. We're going to get run action this way on the backside. The same rules persist for my Will linebacker. He is going to try to stay on the outside hip of that offensive guard at depth until the tackle comes up to him. Or... He sees color by the back, those shoulders going north in his B-gap. That's the only thing that's going to make him fill, and it's going to allow him to be a dual threat player. By playing his gap at depth, if we get outside, if we get outside run, it is going to allow him to pursue from the inside and not get wasted in a B-gap. It's going to allow us to kind of dual gap responsibility. I don't like saying dual gap responsibility because that's very hard to do. But as long as they stay gap responsible to their gap inside, it will allow them to overlap to be a pursue player if a back were to ever get outside of our frame. Now, on the back side of that, um, on the back side of that, um, one thing that allows us to do this, I'm going to get a little bit on this in the in the in the back in the in later part of my presentation is our backside end. Um, we play a technique which we call 50-50. I'm not even going to draw that. That's a waste of time. We call it 50-50. I'm sure most everyone knows about that. It's nothing new. Basically, that's the one player we're giving dual responsibility for. We're giving he has a 50% run and a 50 cent 50% boot responsibility. So he's reading. Now, again, this is a pure assumption that we're getting run this way. We're getting run to the strong side. So the back side of the run, our seven technique end is going to be a 50-50 player. He is going to reduce, and he is going to play a shuffle technique reading the midpoint of the quarterback and the tailback. So he's going to be reading midpoint. If the ball is exchanged, if the quarterback gives the tailback the ball, he will chase. If the quarterback pulls, he will attack flat. That's a horrible line. We never want, that's a big coaching technique for us. 
You never want him attacking the quarterback vertically because now you're getting into a foot race. What you want to do is attack flat, right? Because we want him throwing the ball. There's not a lot of pass concepts. There are pass concepts back there, but there's not as many, right? It's run to the right. It's pass to the left. There's not going to be as many contours back there. And what we're saying is we got coverage back here. All we want to do is we want you to throw the ball. We don't want you to be a ball carrier. So our priority is to front him up. Let me just clear that. Um, let me move on to some more fun stuff. I went too far. Sorry, guys. Okay, so... Not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I'm just going to show you a couple of variations when we're looking about stopping the run, a little things we can do to be different. We call this Texas opposite. Okay. So we're looking at Texas opposite. So basically I just told you, we set our three tech to the run probability. So what we're going to do now is we're not, or if they make a shift, if they go from a, um, a gun weak to a gun strong, instead of shifting our defensive tackles, what we're going to do is we're just going to make an opposite call. OK, so we're going to we're not aligned to the run probability. We're going to keep our tackle and our nose aligned the same way. And on the snap of the ball, we're going to we're going to spike one gap over. OK, so showing a different contour, showing something we haven't done before. And we're going to spike one gap over. Now, one of the downfalls of that, it's very hard. And you got to do a lot of coaching with your linebackers in order to do that. We're exchanging gap responsibilities with our linebacker. So our linebackers actually little shuffle step away from the run probability. Okay. Just so they can get back in their gap responsible. Cause in this scenario, my 30 technique, my 30 technique linebacker. Okay. Is responsible for this a gap. So he has to ensure he gets in that a gap double spike from our tackles, our backers shift over. So that's our, that's, that's Texas opposite. Um, and again, just a different contour in how to play the run. So you're not always moving your defensive tackles. So what keeps defensive coordinators up at night? It's these sons of bitches right here. Like fullbacks are absolute nightmare when you're talking about the run game. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm a lot happier um, coaching against an offense that doesn't have a really great fullback because really great fullbacks cause problems. Um, they're a giant pain. Um, one of the biggest thing they do is they create, they're another way to create, I don't want to say a numbers, um, advantage. They don't create a numbers again, get advantage, but they create extra gaps, which is a freaking nightmare, especially when you want to align properly. Um, so here's a scenario. So when we would call this queen, so this offensive formation for us, um, the offensive front would be pistol queen. OK, so fullback lining up on the backside of of the offensive tackle. Now, what we do in this scenario, and this is a little different from what I've just what I've just showed you guys. Um, so base. Oh, my God. Are we already at 824? I'm sorry. I'm going to speed it up. Um, so basically what we're going to do here is so we are going to see the fullback. We are going to take our Sam. Our Sam is our adjuster. So. I told you before in an ace front, we're going to let the three tech set the front. When they bring a fullback in a game, we're going to let the Sam be the adjuster. Okay. And Sam is going to, Sam is going to adjust the front. So one amazing thing I'm heard you, I'm heard you hear coaches talk about bump and track. I've evolved to a track guy. It started, um, I think 2014 with the national team, instead of bumping our linebackers, I decided to track. So what track means is when you bump your linebackers, in this scenario with the fullback, we'd move, we'd shift our defensive line because we want our three tech to the side of the run probability, which is the fullback. So we're going to set our three tech to the side of the fullback, which means we have to take our 30 will linebacker and make him a 10 and make our 10 Mike and make him a 30. What I've started doing is we are always going to set our front strong. Rush tackle nose quick are always going to be the same. I'm always going to have a Mike linebacker that's a 10. Are, I'm always going to have a will that's a 30. We make Sam the adjuster. So Sam makes everyone else right. So we get Sam in this 90 outside shade on the fullback. He set the formation correctly. King, pistol king. 
same thing. Look at our front. Our front's the exact same. We've made Sam the adjuster. Sam's the adjuster on our fullback. Sam makes everyone else right. Now, if we get motion, if we get motion, we are not moving our front. Sam is tracking. Sam tracks the fullback. So we're basically playing six on six. It's six on six for us. And Sam's job is the fullback. Makes a lot, makes life a lot easier. And it's tracking is a great way to make sure your kids are always aligned correctly. Just trying to shift my. Oops, there we go. I'll be quick on this one. I'm out of time. What makes DC want to drink and smoke two packs a day? This guy. We have a couple of them in the OUA. Um, running quarterbacks give offenses a numerical advantage within the box. Um, DC must account for the extra attacker and adjust. Man versus zone. You know what? What's <laughs> You could argue what the best way to play, what the best coverage is to, to stop the run. Zone is great because your DBs always can be run defenders because they don't take their eyes off the quarterback. Man coverage, DBs are gone. They're in man coverage. We can't, they can't affect as much in defending the run if they're covering someone man on man. So one of the things we like to do to cheat, okay, here's a simple, everyone calls it exchange. This is our Monday, Wednesday check, okay, which uh, I think the first time I ever did it was 2007 with Team Canada. And basically what this is, this is a complete exchange, being afraid of a running quarterback, being able to play, being able to play zone coverage and not worrying about having to lock into man. Basically what we do is we exchange responsibility with our 50, 50 player. So basically what happens in this scenario, the run probability is strong. So they're running, this is 32 zone right now. So the offense is running 32 zone on exchange. We check Wednesday, and it's an automatic crash for our defensive end if the tackle disappears. If that hip disappears, the tackle, the, our defensive end automatically crashes to take cutback away. And our backside, our 30 technique linebacker goes right to the quarterback. So we take, we try to take quarterback run away. Now, the only adjustment with that, you're, you're looking, you know, someone um, like the Baltimore Ravens have a quarterback. Now you got to get your will out of there and you got to get someone a little more athletic, probably move a DB in there. If that's, if that's how you want to defend it, but defending it by checking Wednesday, by this simple little check allows you to play your whole coverage base. It doesn't have to lock you in into man coverage and will, if you look on, if you look right here, will doesn't have to worry about his gap because by the quick crashing, the quicks taking away the Will's B gap, which allows the Will to push the quarterback. And again, what are we looking? We got our DBs in zone coverage. They don't have to worry about their backs being turned and running downfield. If the quarterback were able to beat our Will, we still have a second level of defenders that can help out and can uh, um, um, and help out in any kind of quarterback run where the will wasn't able wasn't able to make, make the tackle but again this is game planning and know who that kid is a quarterback right because that's a very difficult very difficult decision and open field tackling is probably one of the hardest skills in football um other option i'm completely out of time is is the cover zero man coverage option if you got a running quarterback you got to get an extra defender in there pretty much the only guy you got still left is that free safety you got to get the free safety involved. You got to get a mugging around the box right here. Got to get the free safety mugging around the box. And his only job is to spy him. You know, that's, but now you're tied into cover zero. Now you have the extra defender in the box. You can take away quarterback run, rush, tackle, nose quick. Mike will, they just do their regular job. They don't even worry about quarterback run. They just worry about stopping the run with the tailback. And then you have your free safety in the box. Um, that's there to help you um, spy the quarterback. Again, going to want to going to want a very athletic kid, and you're going to want to commit to it. You know, the in the same contour. You know, you could play a too high safety look, which we've done. You know, you go to that too high safety look to defend the run. 
And basically, you're just looking at a, a rotation into cover three. You rotate away from the run probability, right? Run probability, run probability strong. Free safety rolls back to be the middle of defender. Free safety goes against the quarterback. Vice versa the other way. Run probability weak. Free safety rolls on top. Strong safety becomes a spy on the quarterback.